What's up, everybody? I'm trying to get some technical stuff set up here. Mainly my chat window. So just wait with me here for a second. Let me kind of figure this out. Yes, yeah, say hello if you can hear me. Let's make sure this all works. Um, as long as I can read your guys' chat, then we'll be good to go. Trying to, ah, thank you, thank you. I was trying to get the chat set up to where it was showing up correctly for you guys on top of um, ZBrush as well as my cell so I could read it inside of ZBrush. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. I thought I had this set up correctly before I started this, but I don't think I did. All right, here we go. I should be able to read it over here. I don't think I'm gonna do this background where I can't see it. Hold on, working on the details here. Um, oh, what's up, Brian? Yeah, actually, how do I sound? I'm actually just using my um, iPhone headset. I was setting up a fancier mic before, but because I have a more of a mobile setup, I didn't feel like dealing with the mic, so let me know if I sound fine or not. Um, if I do, hopefully that's good. Um, so I think I'm just going to start with what we got. Um, the chat, is the chat size, can you guys read the chat yourself on my little window? It looks so little to me. I, I'm not sure if it's actually, I thought I had it set up correctly to where it was larger. But it looks rather small, I think. Um, granted... Maybe doesn't matter too much as long as I can read uh, what you guys are saying. Man, Apple makes some quality products, I guess, here with uh, this simple headset doing justice to all those fancy mics out there. Mine's even tangled. Ah, uh, see, it's not great. There it is. First comment. Yeah, I can. I, I, I'll probably get the other one set up. This will have to do for now. Um, all right, cool. Uh, let me see if I can figure out. Lastly, the chat overlay. I thought I had it correctly. I mean, at least according to this, I thought I had it correctly. It should look differently. Um, I might have to figure this out next time so we don't waste any more time doing this. Let me try one last thing. If it doesn't work, then we will just move forward. So my general thing I'm going to be doing, I, I, I just want to get on here and sculpt something. Um, if you guys have questions about anything, feel free to ask. But in the meantime, I'm just using this to have a good time, sculpt something, kind of show my workflow on that, which isn't really anything that fancy, to be quite honest, other than just sculpt it, as we like to say. Um, so it's pretty much that simple. So let's do it. Um, I personally decided to, tonight at least, I'm going to um, start working on this night crawler. Um, I've been wanting to do a night crawler bus for a while. I don't know why I've always liked Nightcrawler. So I figured uh, why not do it on the stream? Be the best place to do it. Um, let me, sorry, setting up all my little windows here. Um, do you guys want to be able to read the chat uh, on the overlay? If so, I can, I can try and do it one last second, one last try here. Let me try one last time. See if I can figure it out. There's this embedded in stream thing for the chat. It's supposed to change how it looks. And I don't know why on our end, it's not working. Let me try it one last time. You know, I'm gonna try and just re-add it, actually. Definitely need to re-add it. Hold on. One second, one second. Test, add it right there, okay, oh, okay, there we go, that's what I'm talking about, I don't know why the other one wouldn't update, all right, now I'm like a pro, assuming it works, here, someone type something real quick, give me a test here. Go 
Guys, I am just noobing it up right here. All right, here we go. There we go. Oh, it's still small. So when I do this, okay, hold on. Now I gotta scale it back up like a ton. Let's go, let's go like 250%. Really huge. Here we go, here we go. Actually, I think it just updates. Oh, I see. Yeah, it should just update as I do this. 300. 250 was good. All right. Cool. All right, we're going to just keep it like that. Cool. I see. Oh, I see. I see. I see. All right, let's do this. Um, well, welcome, guys, to the stream. Thanks for joining me. First time for me to do a stream. I used to teach a while back, not so much anymore. Um, so I've done a little bit of this, I guess. Um, but the, the main thing, like I said, I'm going to be doing at least, I'm going to start just sculpting this Nightcrawler bust. If any of you guys have questions about anything, what's up, Kyle? Thanks for joining. Um, if you guys have questions about anything, feel free to ask. Um, I set up this file already. It has um, this old school bust in it. Um, me and the guys used to use for lunch crunches. So I'm going to just start here with this thing and then just start sculpting and uh, go from there. I never use the old uh, red wax. I don't know if anybody uses that anymore. I like to keep it simple with the gray. All right, let's load in some reference here. Basics of hard surface. Um, yeah, Brian, you like that? You know, I was thinking of uh, what to start with, and I said, you know, I'm going to start with the old bust. Uh, it's going to be good. Um, Octavio, um, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to teach you a lot of great hard surface stuff from Maya to Matt ZBrush. Honestly, there's, there's a lot of good. Um, you want me to sculpt from zero and just start with a sphere? I can do that as well. Um, there's a lot of good um, stuff out there on that. Um, primarily, I'm going to just sculpt bust here tonight and do other things. I mean, not to say I couldn't show you some hard surface stuff, but when it comes to ZBrush and hard surface, I'm definitely not pro. Um, and a lot of the character work I do, like being fantasy or something, um, isn't as hard surface fancy as some other stuff. So let's just have fun, and I'm going to make this thing. All right, let me turn some of this stuff on real quick. So I found the uh, model sheet for this guy, so we're good to go here. We're just going to use this bad boy, at least as our inspiration, and get going on this. Look at him. Someone made it for us. Like, they knew I wanted to make this thing. Um, a ZBrush topology? Yeah, we can maybe talk about that at some, some point. Um, that's like a that's like a whole game class here talking here. How about we just get a sphere sphere going here for a second, and we can get into uh, some of that stuff later. All right. Make sure anytime you use ref, you turn off the old uh, spotlight projection stuff under stroke, or else you'll be finding yourself wondering why you can't do anything. I've done that a few times myself. All right. Yeah, I love this. Uh, I love the old Nightcrawl. I'm not necessarily going to stay exactly with this thing, but should be fun to make. Man, Octavio, you really want me to do some accessory now, something from ZBrush to Maya. Uh, probably not tonight, to be quite honest. Maybe I could plan for something next one. So I'm going to try and stream on Tuesday nights, maybe like every other um, week or so. And what I could probably do is plan out some things to show you, because honestly, a lot of this stuff can take some time. So probably what I could do is set up some examples of some sort and bring some things and then like show some steps. Um, and so what I should probably do is write down some of these things, you know, for you just to... Um, to do that, you know? 
I'm going to go full body in the end for sure. We'll, we'll, we'll do full, full body. I need to um, get some music going on this stream. I was trying to get that sorted too, but I could not get it going for some reason. I don't know why. Here, let's turn on. Okay, I love uh, Sculptress now. I used to use Dynamesh for this stuff all the time, but Sculptress for me now has been amazing. Look at that. We got a dude already. Put his eyes there, nose. Yeah, dude, next session. What I could probably do is I'll, I'll sync it with Kyle and maybe there's a way to, um, I mean, one of two ways I could probably do it is, is finding ways to get suggestions. Either I just have to manage it on the stream. You know what, let's just do this. I'm gonna start a Google Doc real quick, hold on. I'm gonna start one for myself. That is stream ideas. Stream ideas. And you wanna see from ZBrush to Maya for a game engine topology. All right, maybe we can talk about some of that then. So the hair details here, let me, let me start to sculpt this. So like anything um, I do at least, um, I always start like as rough as you can. Details, you don't really want to get into that much. Um, you, you really want to just get like the, the flow of this thing going and then figure out, depending on the output, like whatever you're making, like in this case, I'll be making a bust. Um, so I'll probably treat it more like a maquette, like a, like a, you know, statue or something. Um, and you'll pick and choose like where to put hair details and, um, and whatnot. And, and we can get there. And as you see, usually, honestly, when I start these things, they're quite ugly. I'll be honest. Like, I'm not one of those artists who just drops some strokes and it's like a masterpiece. It takes me a little bit to feel it out. You know, in this case, we have these model sheets. Like, I could go one-to-one -one and, like, line this up. If you guys don't use, I don't know how much you guys use the ZBrush uh, images. Like, we could do it like this sort of thing. I mean, I guess we could do this a little bit. I'm not really into his profile, like... I like really the, the, the front feel of this guy and then like some of the other images of Nightcrawler I uh, have going. I'm probably gonna just kind of go with one myself. Like I really like this guy here. Um, and I'll probably end up in the end more something like this image. So I'll add it to the thing as well. Oh, ZBrush always likes to do that. Maybe one of you guys can give me a pro tip on how to not have it resize everything Okay, you know what? I'm going to teach you guys something real quick that I learned literally just like a couple weeks ago about ZBrush. And I feel kind of silly saying this. We were, I was working at work and I was complaining about this actually. I was like, I can't believe ZBrush hasn't fixed this. How's this still a problem? And um, this girl Blair who sits next to me was like, dude, the button's right there. And I was like, what? And so if you guys have ever had the problem, here, let me, I recently did this Akuma. I'm going to show you with Akuma so you guys know what um, I'm talking about. Here, let me open it. Don't, uh, where's the one that has everything? I think it's this one. Hey, good morning. Tia, how do you say it? Saw, is it Senaru Kitsune? I don't know if that's correct. And thanks, G Wilo 86 Glad to be here. Um, all right, so this is the Akuma I just finished. And so I don't know if you guys have experienced the thing where, oh, shoot, I'm not going to be able to show it down here. I think my laptop's cutting it off. Oh, no. All right. Let me see. Let me think here real quick. Let me go to, I'm on a laptop, so some of the stuff doesn't fit. But we can do custom UI here real quick. So basically, you know when your mesh disappears? I don't know if you guys ever have this problem. When you start spinning, I for sure have this problem, and it disappears. And you can't necessarily see everything. Let me get some, rid of some of this stuff. 
on this row. Hold on, get out of here. Oh, it's not gonna just move up for me. Shoot, okay. Um, so maybe it's in one of these other ones. Let me see here. Basically, there's a button that turns dynamic. Oh, it's just my dynamic, I think. It's this. Ah, oh, shoot, guys. I, I can't even tell you, it turns out. There's a thing. It's the solo. It's solo. That's right. That's what I'm thinking of. Where's solo at? Okay, normally it's down here, but since I can't get to it because of my UI, I'm going to have to show you otherwise. Anywhere, anyone, can you tell me where solo is in the menus? So I'm used to finding it in the other spot. Hmm. Hmm. Well, once someone can tell me where solo is, okay, thank you. Transform solo. Okay. We have pros here. It's good. It's good. All right. If you go solo mode, right, it isolates your, your sub tools, which I use all the time, right? I'm like, you know, want to look at my feet? I don't know, whatever it is. I use this quite often, actually. Well, if you accidentally, some of you might know this already. I didn't, so that's why I'm going to share this. If you accidentally hit this little tiny dynamic button up here, you turn on this mode that hides stuff when you spin, which drives me nuts. Maybe there's cases for this, which are totally legit, but... Um, I find myself most of the time where I don't want this. And someone just the other day was like, dude, it's in your solo button. It's, it's a button right there. I was like, ah, thank you. Now I know. Where did solo go? Now I got to find it. There it is. Turn it off. Now it's just going to be like this. Ah. There you go. That's my tip for the night. Let's get back to this guy, our sweet sphere. You can go from that. I actually did start from a sphere on this guy, believe it or not. I think I did. Um, it says, if you hold control down and then click and drag up on that bar, that solo normally is on, so you can scroll. Control click. Oh, there's another pro tip. Control clicking moves this bar. Wow. I should stream more often. I also did not know that. Ah, oh, goodness. All right. Well, I'm learning. All right, let's move this guy over here. Let's continue. All right, so basically when I start these things, um, man, that's solo. Man, that's great too, control. I don't have to do a custom for my, my laptop. Does that work on every menu? No, not there. Ah, that's nice. That's nice. Pro tip. Pro tip right there from Cubed. All right. Anyways, so the, the things I look for when I start this, um, if you guys are wondering, um, I usually start with just general um, head forms. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe quickly do what I did there where I block in like kind of this nauseous shape. I then am big on just grabbing my transform brush and, or sorry, my snake hook brush. And I just start moving stuff around. Um, I generally try and get the general shapes of this thing going just with my move brush. Um, some people will like to use like clip, you know, you just go and like start clipping, ah, wrong one, clip line, there we are. They'll do like stuff where they'll like clip the side of the head or something, you know, do a nice little block out. I like that sometimes myself. I, for one, am the type that um, I kind of like to just get in there. I, I deal with, I always talk to people about how it just kind of is a sh real struggle. So I find that if I just get going, and I tend to do better um, just to feel something out. Like if I have a base mesh for something, then that's nice too. But I'm basically going to give them crazy cheekbones start to fill out that like orbital socket area and go from there. You guys are telling me control drag work everywhere. Just have to hover over. Mm, that's nice. ZBrush does a lot of really cool stuff actually that I, I tend to find out way after. Um, 
Now I can crop my spotlight by Alt, Control, and drag. And I've just rotated it. That doing something. I'm doing a Shift, Control, Rotate, but pivot. Alt, Control, removes the background. Hmm. I don't know if I follow that one. Select paint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Cubed. Have a good night, dude. Or whoever you are. Have a good one. I assume... Okay, I have to sleep. Welcome to the Team K. Nice to meet you. Why, thank you. That was nice. I have to get used to reading my chat at the same time. Have a good night. All right, let's keep going. Um, so I'll drop in just like basic shapes on this thing. This is a late start for some people or early morning for others. Depends where you're at. What about paint on the spotlight menu? So I even might quickly, um, oops, just kind of block out where this mouth might be. Oops, I'm using damn standard here to draw. I use damn standard a lot. Be like, all right, he's mad. Cool. No biggie. I don't think I'm gonna worry too much about this Nightcrawler image other than, than um, trying to capture the feel of this thing. I'm just gonna kind of have fun with it. Uh, do I only do characters? Pretty much, honestly. I, from a pretty young age, I mean like I, I've always loved video games. Um, that's kind of what got me into doing this is I wanted to just work on games somehow. And I always was really drawn to characters. Like I love worlds and environments, but by no means am I great at painting them or sculpting them. Most, uh, pretty much all my career has just been making characters or some form of characters dealing with them. Look at that funny skull. Make sure you have perspective on. I just realized I didn't. So I, I basically start, get the base things in, try to make sure I have, you know, this angle here. Angle back for the cavity, got some form of a nose. Um, this guy has kind of a bigger chin. Let's get his ears in here. And starting from a sphere, what a challenge. Challenge accepted. So yeah, I've pretty much always done characters and I, I still really like um, characters to this day. I really like, so like one of my, my last job I was at, I was involved with everything on the project and I really like the world building aspect as well. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed it way more, and this might sound silly, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would actually doing the world building. I just had never been really a part of it before uh, to that level that I was. So I got a taste for that and uh, it was the first time and so I could see myself going forward doing more and more of that kind of stuff on a personal level probably, all the while um, working professionally doing character work, you know? Um, so yeah. So let me read this pro tip real quick. If you select paint on spotlight circle menu, then you can control drag on an image to remove the background. All right, let's try it. I guess you're assuming you can say I mean, the other thing I could do is just crop this real fast in Photoshop. Let me open that as well while I try and do your tip. All right, let's see here. All right, let's go back here. Let me read back up here on the control spotlight menu. Then you control, go to paint mode. Paint, go to my paint. Paint, okay, control, alt. Alt control drag. 
Oh, wow. Look at that, guys. So is that based on the color you pick? Oh, it is. Okay, so if you hover over a color and control alt drag, it kind of isolate selects that. Wow. Nice tip right there. Again, a pro tip. Dang, nice one. That's really good. I think I will do your tip, then I think I'll just move, look at the head for now, kind of the profile, not so much. I think I'm going to look at these two. Oops, oops, and move on. Um, all right, let me see these other questions real quick. Safe space, yes. You still work at Santa Monica? I do not. Um, I left Sony Santa Monica a few years back when they were in God of War pre-production for the new one. I went to DICE for a little bit, and then a small studio called Section. That's where I was a director on a project, which was fun. And now I'm at Riot on a new project. Um, did I go to college for game art? Not really. Um, I So I was in Colorado when I wanted started to learn about this kind of stuff. In high school, I had some buddies tell me about 3D, and then... Um, they kind of got me into like the basics. And so I found out, I was just doing it on my own. And, um, and uh, then I found out some people in town through my brother were doing these animated shorts straight to DVD. They weren't games, but they were doing 3D. And um, I said, hey, because they were friends with my brother. I said, hey, if you guys do internships, can I do it? because I just want to learn. And they said, yes, why don't you come in at night when we have some free computers? Because I didn't really have a setup yet. And so this one guy, um, his name is John Dobson, who ran the studio called Whirly Gig, um, started basically helping me at night. I just asked him questions while he was working on their project. And, and eventually, at that time, I just started um, caught my first year of college. So I just finished high school. And so I was going in, loving it. I was, I was going to a four-year university, four university at the time. And I was like, man, what am I doing? Um, I don't really know what I'm doing here. So just for the time being, I stepped out of that. I finished one year there and started going to a community college here in, Col or there in Colorado just to take my basics, like art classes and stuff. Um, what's up, Anderson? And... Um, and all the while being an intern, I started carrying my computer in. I have one of those funny stories where I was um, an intern there. And because they didn't have extra computers and I so badly wanted to be there with them, I literally would carry my desktop computer with me everywhere. I took it to work and left it in my truck, took it to school. And then I would take it to the internship. I'd set it up, work, you know, um, when I could be there while between work and school. And then I'd take it home and work on 3D at home. And that's what I did for like a year and a half, two years, just all the time. Um, and, uh, and I basically just got advice from them on what to do next. And I just basically started asking them like, hey, do I need for for, to go to university? Like, because I was looking at schools back then, like, you know, uh, I think at the time there was stuff like Full Sail, Art Institutes. Um, there's the DigiPen. I, I didn't really know, honestly, I had no idea. And they were just like, dude, just do your portfolio and get a job. And so I kind of went with that route. And I, so I just took community college art classes. I just took as much art as I could, worked on my portfolio as much as I could, and then um, just applied. And through one of the guys I knew from my internship, he helped me get in touch with my, my in, an interview. And I ended up getting my first job that way out here. And just been working ever since and just learning on the job. And out here in L.A. is kind of nice because there's art classes out here. You can take a lot of stuff. So I just keep taking stuff, you know. That's how I did it. Just work, worked a lot, got advice where I could and research. And now online, I mean, look, you guys are here on a stream. Um, there's so many resources now. So for university or not, it, it depends. It depends what you have access to and all that kind of stuff. So... I think I just read one of you guys said you just finished. 
Maybe not. Oh yeah, you just, you just do your digital project for your bachelor's. Nice. That's awesome. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah, I like that Pixelogic does these li live streams too. Yeah, there's so many resources now. Um, between ArtStation, I mean, I'll do a shameless plug. I have a Gumroad. It's a couple years old now. It, I take you through the, um, basically the whole, uh, here, I'm, I'm going to do a shameless plug here for if any of you have interest. Let me get it real fast. There's tons of this stuff out there now. I have some. I have one where I take you through the entire process of making characters. But even aside from mine, it's just a couple years old now in terms of the tools, but it's still ZBrush and my and topology and everything. That stuff's pretty timeless right now. You said, why is my cursor not um, perfectly aligned? I don't know. It looks aligned to me. Maybe there's something with how um, the Windows Capture thing does it. You know what? You know what? It might be better. Here, let me try something real fast. I might should turn capture cursor off. That's like actually an option I noticed on this software. Maybe it's doubling up my cursor. Let me see. Capture cursor. I'm going to turn it off. And you tell me. All right. Off. You guys let me know. Uh, I just turn it off. So let the stream update and... Let's see if that's uh, better. Because, I mean, really, all you guys should see is the ZBrush one. Yeah, I think uh, the software was doing an extra layer of uh, cursor. There we go. Yeah, sorry, guys. I must not have saw the chat there. So, yeah, anyways, game school, all that kind of stuff. Do any of you guys, do all of you... Um, what do you guys like what, making? Like characters? I mean, is that why some of you are here? Like, you guys just like ZBrush casually? What, is, what are Marcy guys? It's crazy. I remember ZBrush back at like one and a half. I opened it and it was like this bizarre um, one and a half D tool. I, I really didn't get it at first. Um, I was like, what is this thing? And I was working at a studio called Genuine Games at the time. And um, man, I really need to update my ZBrush. I don't have the latest one. I need to do that because I want the new mirror tools and folders. Um, Genuine Games, I remember normal maps were a thing. You know, like I think what was like the new Doom showed off their normal maps and stuff. And um, and I knew that was the future for games. So I had a buddy, I worked with Rich Diamond, who was up on all that. Because we had, one of the games at the studio that we were working on was called Fight Club. And they actually used normal maps. They're one of the earlier normal maps games on the Xbox, actually. Um, it's a Fight Club fighting game. I don't know if you guys remember that game. And um, I was like, I got to start learning this. And I remember ZBrush 2. You only had one sub tool. One. And you had a really plan. Let's put it that way. ZBrush 3 came out and it was amazing because you had multiple subtools. It was so good. Now it's great. When ZBrush 3 came out, that was, that was like, that was huge. It was awesome. Um, did I press Z first for what? Yeah, I love characters too. What's up? What's up, what's up? Yeah, for me, I, I, I really like envir environments and everything, but um, something about characters I just think are so cool. I can't, uh, I can't deny it. I can't deny how much I love characters. All right, so basically at this point, I, this is where I start to just... You know, I, I just get in the old eyeballs. You know, I try to think of their scale. So I know my eye sockets are off. I try and think of their scale and general position of where I want them. Um, try and keep the old 
two eyes or one eye between them type thing. And I tend to make my stuff with wide eyes. I don't know. Um, did you did you work with Rich at uh, Blizzard? I take it. I assume so. If this is right. Raynaud, is that how you say your name? I'm not totally butchering this right now. As I know your work, but um, how do I get a phonetic typing of your name? Yeah, Rich, is, Rich and I actually work together now. Um, he's who got me, I started talking to for my current job, Rano. Rano. Rano? Rano. 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 I think I got it. Rano. Um, I'm working with him again now, which is awesome because he, Rich Diamond was, um, if you guys don't know who Rich Diamond is, he, uh, made the original, um, Drake from Uncharted and, and Chloe and a lot of the main cast on that game. So he's pretty well known for that. And he's done a lot of cool stuff. He's not, a, he doesn't have a huge presence anymore online, but the dude's super talented. He's a really good guy. All right. So anyways, I got my eyeballs, and we got this going. Here we go. So most of the time, I pr honestly, like, I know you guys are watching me sculpt uh, just straight up like this, kind of high-res looking. I typically do not recommend this to most people. I'm just I'm comfortable to the point where I can kind of do it in ZBrush. Um, usually t how I would teach is I would start with something simple, keep the mesh relatively low. I mean, still, I'm not really getting into too much beyond maybe secondary forms here. You got to be really careful putting too many features in too quick. Um, and everyone will say the same thing and it's true because you will get lost and it'll look muddy and it won't be great. So keep it simple. Keep moving. So we can block in most of this here pretty quick. Oh man, it's so ugly. It's brutal doing this live. So brutal. But we're gonna get there. All right. So I'm probably gonna do a different sphere for the head, hair also. Let's see here. Let's start to just rough this thing in. Oh, it's Brian. What is Brian saying? Brian Winia. I miss Brian. Brian and I work together at Sony on God of War Ascension. He's the man. He made me laugh a lot. He's a funny guy. Brian, you should stream. What do you guys think of this, this cap here? I, I don't think I can actually look at this hair. I don't know what's going on here, to be quite honest with this concept. I think he has like a nice little straight hairline. Not sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me get that other one back here for a second. Which one do I want? I think I want something like this. I guess this hairline is just kind of straight. I, I, I must not know my Nightcrawler well enough. Okay, he's just going to get a fancy modern do, I guess, this guy. All right, let's go. Um, so I'm reading my comments. Dude, nice, Muhammad. Glad to, you were able to learn some things. Um, I don't use everything for Sculptures Pro, but... If I'm blocking in things, like if I'm doing stuff like this, I'll definitely use Sculptress Pro. I'll just use Sculptress. Like, it's just so easy to like rough stuff in so quick. Um, it's hard for me not to want to use it. If that makes sense. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but I just really like it. I feel like I can at least block in shapes and then clean them up if I need to. Like in this case, like I don't get too caught up on like 
worrying about my topology and stuff at this phase, um, which is nice. I can just kind of freeform. It's cool. Any of you guys playing Sekiro? This game's amazing. It's really good. But I am biased to from software games. Look, we got Nightcrawler. Look at that. Just happy old Nightcrawler. Let's give him let's give him some uh, traps real quick. Just so he's not. This is why I like Sculptures Pro right here. Like used to, it'd be like, okay, append a sphere, you know, which honestly is probably at this point good for like a rib cage. I might actually append a cylinder or something. But it's too comforting to just be in here doing this. And then before you know it, we have we have ourselves a, a bust. We can just blow it up here. I mean, it's amazing. Remember when, uh... oh wait, sorry, you said Sculptures Pro I've been talking about. I'm talking, I've just been using Sculptures Pro in here, just to be clear, not the uh, Sculptress. So, Let's just go down as far as his ribs. I'm not gonna go much further tonight, at least. And I do think it's pretty important to block out these types of things. At least have an understanding of your structure. You know, don't. Um, that's why typically using like rudimentary shapes can be actually quite nice because you can just do like a cylinder for the. The rib cage there, that works pretty good. What are the main programs you've used for servicing in the industry? Um, well, I used to use, really, I mean, Photoshop up until uh, Substance. Substance now. I mean, Mari, I use Mari a little bit. It depends, it depends the type of game you're on, I guess. 99% of games probably can use Substance. Great, Photoshop. You know, I know other people like some other software. I pretty much use those two. That's it. That is it. Oh, yeah, I should look at this side profile. Good tip. I'm not in pain mode. I got to get out of... Where is move mode? Oh, you turn paint mode off. Oh, yeah, nice. Look at that profile. You're right. Now I see. Beautiful. All right, we got to do this. Um, you know what I need to do? I need to open Photoshop really fast. Look at this. Watch this fancy transition I think I set up. Let's try it. Oh, burn. That didn't work. Coming back. Well, let's, let's see here, let's see here. One second, I'm gonna open and crop this image. So I get that. Yeah, I'm all substance, all ZBrush, Photoshop, that's it. Thanks, Brennan. It's fun to be here, actually. I hope to make something cool tonight. First, you guys are probably wondering what I'm doing right now. I, I, I have Photoshop open. Let me see if I can get this on the stream. Let's try it again. Why doesn't it do it? Let's try this. Photoshop. Oh, I see. Here we go. Here we go. And I have some learning to do when it comes to doing streams, it turns out. Um, if you guys did not know, all the people that do streams well, a lot of work goes into it. All right, let me see here. Nightcrawler. Let me see. Once I open this reference image, I'm curious if it'll Photoshop will work. 
I didn't. I think also I have a laptop. Using a laptop, I think I have, um, oh, that kind of works. Hmm? All right, not gonna worry about it too much. Let me just crop this thing real fast. Give me a second. I'm just gonna crop this bust. So I'm just going to crop the side view for this hair styling also. Side. All right, let's get back to ZBrush. Boom, transition. <sighs> yeah, stream struggles are real. That's for sure. Some people have the fanciest stuff going. So impressive. So I didn't say, didn't you guys say you do play Sekiro? Let's see. No, no one responded to that. I guess it's just me in here, right? Oh, well. I'm a big Dark Souls guy. What else have I liked lately? Um, my son is playing Toad's Treasure, Treasure Tracker. Classic on the Nintendo Switch. We're going to play the Zelda remake when it comes out together, I think, next. That'll be our next thing together we do. Souls games are great. Bloodborne, specifically, is amazing. Um, oh, you're stuck at the Monk. Yeah, game isn't easy, but I found it kind of easier than Souls, like Dark Souls, mainly because um, um, it's single player. You can't ask for help, so I find that they've had to design it in a way, I think at least it feels like, to where uh, they can't just make it so hard. This guy feels really young right now, doesn't he? Let's see where this goes. I'm gonna, I might make, keep him a little younger with this old school hairdo. Actually, I really like this profile. It's much cooler than, than um, it led on to be there. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna need to pull this out. Maybe give it a little wave here. Get this chunk going, almost Superman-esque. And then let's think, it's got to plan out some of these forms here. So I'm going to assume this is coming kind of from this group, right? And then we have some other nice spike things going as it goes up. What does like a spike do? and back. Some people probably have much more efficient ways of doing this. There are some good, um, you know, like the Akuma I was doing last, I tried using these like hair tube brushes that like, um, who made them? Um, I'm spacing on them real quick, but like, uh, they're really nice actually. And maybe a lot of you guys have seen them uh, not reference. Uh, I thought it was my reference. Tools. ZBrush. Brushes. Oh, Dylan Ekron. He made these hair brushes that have like real nice taper and shape to them. And I tried like doing all the hair with it. And for Akuma, it didn't work. I ended up just having to re-sculpt it all. But for his awesome sculpts he does, it works. So, Brian, you're stuck at the start screen of all of our favorite games. We're always hounding Brian to play Dark Souls and Bloodborne. It's good. Um, all right. Is 
is tricky. Let's keep this quick right now. I think I'm overthinking this at the moment. We're gonna gotta define basically where the parts are. Oops. So I need to actually work on the rest of the structure still before I get too crazy into this. The hair actually though is I find quite important um, when doing all of these characters because it frames the so much of the face that um, I try to kind of keep up on it. I mean, obviously too, the hairline is very much affected by the structure of the face also. So you kind of have to balance the two in terms of block in. But at, at this phase, at least, I should probably keep this pretty simple. Like, I should not overthink. Oh, shoot. Where'd it go? I should not over um, think this hair at the moment. You can get really caught up in the details, and that's no good. Basically, what I should be shooting for is flow right now. And then sort out some of this later. Oh, I turned off. That's why. I turned off sculptures. The other reason I like Sculptress is you can quickly um, just like do large brush and smooth. And I find that really nice for just simplifying the forms real fast. Also a nice thing about Damn Standard is it does this kind of stuff actually pretty well. Where you can just kind of move your brush in a circle and it'll pinch some form up. Kind of nice. Oh, I'm actually pretty excited for Death Stranding also. It looks cool. I have no idea what it's about. I actually quite like um, the worlds he does. Like, I, I really like the Metal Gear series. Um, when I'm playing the game, you know what I mean? Cinematics. Mm. Now, saying that, Metal Gear 4 had some of the most epic action. I liked all the action cinematics a lot. And I just got bored when he was cooking eggs in his home, wherever that was. You'd sit there and literally cooking eggs and talking. And I fell asleep. That's how that goes. Um, there is a game called Slay the Spire. I don't know if any of you guys have played it. It's amazing. It's really good. I've been playing way too much of that game. It's um, a roguelike. If any of you guys don't know what that is, it's basically... Um, roguelikes are like typically action-adventure-like games that you replay, you die, you replay, you collect gear, replay, and every time you play it, you get random stuff, right? But there's some form of progression to it. Um, and uh, this one, Slay the Spire, oh man, it's so good. I recommend anyone. It's a card game for the front end, but it's still a roguelike. And uh, it's just so well balanced. It's a strategy game. And you get, um, you unlock cards as you go, and there's three different classes for it. It's really cool. Anyone here? It's just me. So how many of you... Um, oh, I've played an insane amount of Slay the Spire already. I've slayed the heart with Ironclad and... Or sorry, no. Defect and um, Silent. I haven't done Ironclad yet. On the heart. It's super addicting. You know, I, I kind of stopped playing mobile games recently because of this. I, I feel like I'm like, I don't have time for mobile games. It's funny because I was working on a mobile game before my current one. And so I was playing a lot of them, but I didn't like how I would just like sit down and I'd open a mobile game. Um, I found that I just, I don't know, I didn't feel good about it. Not that they're bad. I, mean, I, I just personally like, eh, you know, kind of like eating too much candy. And so I stopped deleted the games on my phone. And then I started playing Slay the Spire, and I feel like it's the same problem. It's so good, so simple, 
so easy to pick up. I need to stop playing it. Period. It's artist name Niazi. Mm -hmm. He made a Nightcrawler? Like he's an old school Marvel guy? You mean? Or this is Nightcrawler from X-Men. All right, I think we'll stylize this a little bit. So the face is kind of short. So it is time to scale it up. Oop. Oop. Let's do that. So have you guys upgraded to the latest ZBrush? Any features you're liking? I um, really want folders. I'm so excited for folders. So excited. I need to update. But I have to wait on my job to do it at work. And because of that, I'm waiting for that first. So I have everything in sync before I do it at home too. So I need to go in tomorrow and ask again about this. You know, oh wait, there's a real perspective feature, like an actual perspective. I am excited to look at the Z remesher actually, but what do you mean real perspective feature? Is it like they open a new window that shows actual perspective? Explain please. All right, so I use the damn standard here. I don't know if you guys are curious. Um, to help start defining planes. I'll use it a lot for that. And I'll also use it like here I'm pushing in. Oh man, please tell me there's a real perspective feature, a real camera like in Maya. Wow, that is way bigger than, I mean folders is huge because of some of my files, but honestly like camera is like next tier. Wow. Um, especially for like character work when you're talking more like cinematic stuff, um, not just game view. The real camera is huge. I don't know if you guys, but like I nonstop um, export stuff to Maya all the time just to see it in camera view. And um, that will be massive. Man. Thanks. Yeah, I, I like too when the planes start coming through. Um, like it's a, it is a little funky. Like I, like I said, right now my main goal is, um, like for example, this ear looks really high. My main goal right now is just kind of to go on it. Some sculpts come together kind of quick. Some, uh, most people aren't that fast, you know? Maybe a time lapse lurks fast, but the struggle is real, like I always say. So, oh. Um, and even if people are sculpting stuff fast, typically they're cutting corners, you know? It's not like, a, I will say that some people are just really fast, but very few. Most of us aren't, aren't that fast. Okay, it's cool. I'll have to check that guy out. I've been just thinking about Nightcrawler for a while. I, I don't know why. I've always liked Nightcrawler as an X-Men. You know, it's funny. I did not read a lot of comics. Um, I'm one of those people who all my world in pop culture is video games. I didn't watch a lot of movies growing up. I didn't read comics growing up. 
Um, like I, my buddy Brian, I don't know if he's still on here, but he was shocked when he found out I hadn't seen certain movies like Predator, you know, <laughs> until he was like, he gave me a list once of movies I had to watch. Because all my context was games. We didn't have anything at home. We, we mainly had um, games at home, and we'd watch, you know, like things like America's Funniest Home Videos, which is great. Um, but we, we are a bigger family. There's five kids in our family. We didn't go out to a lot of movies and stuff, which is totally fine. Looking back on it, not a big deal. But um, I just, you know, didn't watch a lot. So I missed out on a lot of those things. And so when I think of Nightcrawler, I think of the X-Men video game and how cool he was. I actually don't think of anything else. I know he was in some of the X-Men movies. You know? I liked his ability in the X-Men game where he would dash around. So that's how I know things. Ninja Turtles, I watched some Ninja Turtles, but again, Turtles in Time, um, the arcade games on the Super Nintendo, that was my jam for Ninja Turtles. That was my life, the one on the Nintendo. Um, I do remember as a little boy, though, watching Secret of Ooze, or was someone where um, Splinter's doing karate as a little rat. Is that Secret of the Ooze when they're doing flashback, right? I, um, I do remember that as a kid. But we didn't have cable or anything, so I um, played video games a lot with my brothers. Maybe me, primarily, but they like games too. But it's stuck. It's stuck with me. It did. So again, you'll see I'm not really getting too detailed with this. Most of what I focus on at this point is structure. Um, at some point, I'll like start styling maybe a little bit more and pushing certain things. Honestly, if there's a stage I should push stuff, it's probably now. Like any good like figure drawing or something. It's all the same um, process. These ears look funny. The lobe is sticking way out. I probably should actually just take this whole ear and I need music next time. I, I gotta sort that out. I like I I like having music. I couldn't figure out uh, this one thing to get it going. Next time. Stream stream problems, you know. Stream life. ZBrush viewport is better than, than Maya, you think? The new one? How is it better? I mean, I just want real perspective. That's all I care about. I love seeing stuff in real perspective with actual lighting on it. Again, like going to Keyshot or something. I use Keyshot a lot for just stuff. Oh, a no, a no music stream vote. Is it because you like to have music while you, uh, I assume, doing your own thing? That's fair. I can also play it only through my, I think, headphones and not the stream. So I just have it to jam at, jam on. So one thing I notice a lot, um, for any of you that might care, a lot of the new people I find will, for example, do an ear like this. A lot of people, I, you can look at their ears and hands and pretty quickly see, at least in my opinion, how good they are because of things like them are a little complicated forms in smaller areas. And a common thing I'll see is structure on them that's off. So like, for example, this, is, this ear is not done, but a lot of people will not have the proper volume back here you know, they'll be like really flat. You won't have certain planes. And also how people's, you can tell their experience too by how you can see right here how these forms come together. So this isn't too offensive, but a lot of people will have a very loose transition between forms. So you want to make sure when you think of forms, always think of two masses coming together um, is a very important, simple thing to follow. They aren't, you know, 
tried to avoid um, having a soft, big U right here, you know? But like you can feel the ear come into this. You have a skull and they're like meeting. You don't want the, there's concave and convex. Let me think. I don't know. Basically, you want forms to come together and they create concavity. You don't want swooping valleys most of the time. It looks deflated. You have forms that come together, maybe smaller ones that make it feel like there's a this. But make sure your forms are clean when they come together in planes, clear planes. But the ear is one I see all the time where people don't spend the right time on. And um, you can kind of see their understanding of form. So like this is kind of over the top right here. But you can see, like I want to make sure the skull feels like it's here and here. Yes, you're going to have a little skin between it. That's true. But for the most part, a place like this, you know, even on muscles, like all your muscles, like these are forms coming together on my finger, not like little swoops down here. It's just something I notice quite often. How do I split up the time of progress when you start a character? Um, I mean more time and attention on gesture and volumes and details. Um, so, Something like this where I'm just, I'm literally just sculpting a maquette for fun. I mean, okay, so I'm not, uh, I don't do a lot of like, um, what do you call them? You know, statues for sale. Um, I was watching Joe, um, oh, what's his name? I can't think of his last name for a second. He sculpts tons of maquettes all the time. And he sculpts everything in pose, like straight up and gets gesture, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Um, I probably should do more of that. And I actually thought of doing that for this guy, um, to be quite honest. I was thinking maybe of doing that for him um, and going that way because when making like a statue, there's a lot of value in getting the rhythms as fast as possible and not losing that, just like in a figure drawing. Um, however, in production, for games, that's not a thing, right? We put all our posing into um, in the rig, the, the animator's, pose it all pretty much, right? So your gesture kind of is underlying um, primarily within like the, kind of the character itself, like so like rhythms within the face and like maybe like uh, some simple expressional gestural stuff that you can kind of have in, right? Like here, like I might worry about like kind of the default character, it really depends on your final output, um, what your team is going for. If, if they're like, you have super fancy rigs, a lot of animators are like, make it neutral, you know? This is a constant talk you'll have at a lot of places where animators will be like, I wanna do it all in myself. Um, I tend to think you need something in there because otherwise your rigs have to be crazy. But um, for the most part, for me, because the most of the stuff I do is game assets, I do T-pose, and I uh, hope my character at least have their arms down and I try and hit rhythms in their forms. Um, and then if I'm doing personal projects, to be honest, I'm kind of lazy and I just, I've sculpted a few things in asymmetry and it's really fun and I should probably do it more often. You know, generally speaking, you probably improve and you get a lot more character out of it. Why am I giving them sad eyes? I gotta be careful here. Not to do that. Um, clay brush, I love because it's, the nice thing about clay is it goes over forms and like fills them in, right? It makes this nice volume and it's very direct, which I like. Unlike other brushes that do build up over strokes, I like this because I can do the same place and I don't let up anything and it just is there. I think early on clay brush is really nice for like how it feels for forms coming together. Like if we work out this nose, um, you know, like just even having, the, again, what I was talking about peaks and valleys, like this right here, the forms come together nice on it. I like how it feels. 
I don't know. It's just I, I pretty much use damn standard clay brush, standard brush, H polish. Um, and let me think what else. So like, oops, here I'll use H polish, you know, hit, start hitting planes. I hold alt a lot in H polish. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. I like alt a lot for pulling forms up, like here. I'm pulling them out, not just polishing them down. Um, but those are pretty much the brushes I use. Standard, H polish, clay. Clay buildup, I used to use a lot of clay buildup. Not so much anymore. And clay tubes, I used to use clay tubes a lot too. I was actually like hardcore clay tubes. Um, Primarily, I like the texture it would leave behind. Um, but now I, uh, I like clay. I pretty much, when I worked with uh, Grissetti for a bit when, I was, when we were at Sony together, and he, when he came in, he used a lot of the clay brush, and I just watched how he used it, and I was like, oh, that actually looks really nice. I never thought about that. Because I found myself with clay tubes, uh, I'd sculpt and then um, smooth. And the clay, clay brush just did it for me. I didn't have to smooth afterwards. It was just kind of there. It, it just felt nice. And I started using it. And I just liked it. It's pretty much my answer. Pretty much just use what um, feels good. I'm going to have to really work out this hair. This is, this is rough, this hair. I don't, I don't understand this hairdo. It's, it's like too fancy for me. I almost need like a side swoop where like I can have it swoop over, uh, like more like a hairdo I'm used to seeing, I think. Otherwise I need to get some better reference for that thing. You know, because if I go side swoop, this makes more sense to me. What's the difference between polish, S polish, and H polish? Um, I don't know. I use H polish. I can tell you that. Um, H polish just kind of like flattens to the edge, like so. Um, smooth polish, I think, let's see. I'm not sure, honestly. They all just have different effects. My general, oh, the other, oh, you know, I'll go back to brushes I use. My general thing is I just try things out. I might see like someone use something a certain way and I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, um, I'm gonna try that. Um, and then I'll start looking into things. Like if you aren't aware of this, like in the light box, there's a brush menu that has other ones too. And I actually really like some of these planar brushes because um, trim dynamic is really nice. Planar, um, and, and here you have some other polish brushes, but like there's planar brushes that I really like. There is, and trim brushes. So this trim, there's this one called trim, what is it? Trim normal. I like this brush a lot for making straight up planes. So say we're like, I want a strong jawline right here. You drag out and go back. And if you don't hold, hold alt, it kind of goes for the low point. If you hold alt down, it'll, it'll go up and it'll make a flat line and it's completely flat. Um, I really like this brush a lot. And let go of alt, hold alt, and it does different things. This I actually use quite a bit too. Um, like this is a great case for it. Let's just make him a little chin, a little butt chin right there. Look at that. H polish that a little bit. And I smooth it out and you start getting planes. I really like the trim normal brush. Um, really nice. And... Um, What's the other planer? These planer brushes I'm big fans of, depending on what I'm doing. Like, um, like I made this gargoyle and it had a lot of planes on it, or like uh, like maybe a wood surface or rock surfaces. I like these plane brushes. So there's planer, and then there's like planer cut here, which, and also planer. Maybe it's planer cut. Let's try this. I just try this stuff. See. Yes, this one's really nice. 
So like if I was looking to make like a plane out of this, it'd be like, oh, damn. It kind of, depending on the size of your brush, it'll make, it takes into account larger spaces or smaller spaces. So if I have a smaller brush, it's smaller. You can see, and then bigger, it gets bigger. And if you're blocking in forms to be planar in general, this actually works really good in reinforcing them. So like clearly this guy is not made specifically to be like that, but let's say you wanted to make a more planar side there, like that actually works really good for it and to reinforce some of those aspects, right? Um, I use these more in special cases, but some of those, some of my favorite brushes to use, but I do just use the old planar brush. Like if you go B, P, P planar, this brush is great too. Um, it's, it's a little different than the other planers in that you kind of have to go over and over again on some spots. It, it's not as um, strong. So like if you already have planes in place, it'll work pretty good. Like the case like here, like his nose, I can reinforce stuff pretty nicely with this brush. But that's pretty much it. So like clay brush, standard brush, damn standard. Um, uh, yeah. What would you recommend to start with a sphere or base mesh when starting a character? Um, again, it probably depends on your goal. I, I, I shy away on personal projects. I mean, I only reason I opened a base mesh tonight was because I was on stream and, um, and I didn't want to look like a fool. But here we are with a sphere. Um, but really, in production, spheres make no sense. Personal stuff, I like to start with spheres because I feel like I'm more free. I also learn to just learn to sculpt my forms. I'm not hiding behind any sort of base form that might exist. Um, I like starting fresh. If anything, I might start with spheres and block in just like a maquette, like cylinders and spheres and move stuff around. Um, you know, that sort of thing. But in, in a production sense, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So like if you're like doing a project that has timelines and stuff, starting with a base mesh to have like your proportions and stuff in place are huge. Um, also in production, if you're working on say a project that has proportion that you have to be aware of or like rigs, your base mesh typically informs you of that stuff. And um, it really doesn't make any sense to not start with one at all. Um, I it. If I was your lead, I'd be like, oh, just start with the base mesh. Not a big deal, especially like hands. Save so much time on hands, um, feet, things like that. Um, so it really depends your goal. If you're learning and you want to learn to sculpt forms and things, starting as simple as possible is probably really smart. You know, force yourself to learn to control things. Um, but if you start from a sphere, Try not to subdivide up real fast and get caught in that like uh, lumpy state of sculpting. Really keep it simple. Think of it like figure drawing when, you know, they tell you, um, I should probably save this by the way. Thankfully ZBrush doesn't crash all that much anymore. Um, so in the case of this, like I was actually going to pull in a base body so I didn't have to block it all out. And then I was gonna sculpt in the posing. And that makes sense too. Let's do that real quick. Actually, I have no idea how big this body's gonna be, so let's find out. If you're concept sculpting, sometimes it feels freer to just have, um, just start from nothing. It's like doing drawing, you know? If you start with like a preset thing, you're probably gonna not be as loose about it. Same kind of thing. Yeah, here's kind of like a base thing I had going from another character. I was going to use mainly for, I didn't feel like pulling all these forms out. Now, we could do it, saying that. I guess there's really no problem in doing it. I'm gonna append it for now so I can save over this other file though. I don't know if that answered your question, but um, just think about your goals and try not to cut corners when it comes to learning or getting better, but have, have very specific goals in what it is you're doing though. So like you can't do everything, right? Don't try to be the master of everything. But if you're trying to be a character artist, you should understand 
basic principles of sculpting and forms and structure. And the best way to learn is just to do it. Um, learn to build your own meshes because you're going to get on a project or something where you're going to have like some crazy character and you're going to have to know how to actually freeform build that thing. You can't hide behind stuff, you know? And also you'll just become better artists who learn. Oh man, what am I doing here? Um, base mesh, it depends what you mean by base mesh. Like I think this one that I was just looking at, I made in, I actually sculpted this from scratch, like a sphere type of situation. Where is he? Yeah, this was sculpted kind of like that and it turned, I just Z-remeshed it and um, look at him up there. Hmm, I think that is actually the feet is where the floor is. So let me move all this. Um, I did one of those, I started this that way. Oops, hold on. Let me turn this on. I'm always a little confused as to specifically how this one works. There we go. I love this. Oh man, come on. Work. I wonder why the eyes didn't come all the way at first. Weird. Um, so if it's for a game though, let's say like um, I'm on a project where my scale position are all a lot tighter, I'll probably start something in Maya. Mainly because um, you can just control it a little better. And when, and, and also that means I probably would grab something that already exists somewhere. I'm not as concerned about it, you know? I'm not worried. On production, do what makes sense in terms of speed. All right, let me hide this heavy. Let me just pull his neck in. actually like that. This actually helps me. I, I could build this, I guess. But I like the thicker neck, actually. Feels a lot better. Sets his head in there quite nice. My dog is looking at me in its cage, whining. I think it wants out. One second. I'm going to let out of his little cage. Just a second. Hopefully they don't bark outside. Generally what I say to a lot of people, um, it's not probably a good answer, but I try not to overthink stuff. Just get in and start doing it. If, if you're at a studio, it, it matters a lot more because, um, but typically, hopefully you're in a case where someone has an opinion on that maybe already, or you can ask like, hey, do you guys have anything I can start from, or do you need me to build this from scratch? And, you know, even if you're a studio, like um, if you have rights to using another base mesh as a starting point, say something you bought online or you've already made, typically you're going to start there anyways if they have nothing. Uh, I rarely, unless concept sculpting something, start from just scratch at work or if I just want to have some fun, right? Hey, what's up, Kurt? I remember you. How you doing? My dogs, I think they're barking outside. They, they we, we have like this little backyard and they like to bark at squirrels up in the tree. Hopefully they stop. They're little mini dachshunds and um, They like to bark. They're bred for, you know, hunting little rats in holes, basically. And so, so yeah, here at, at this point, I'm looking for flow pretty much. 
Oh, they're barking. They're like, they're barking at me again. Now let, they want back in. One second. If I kind of want to do this. But I'd prefer them be inside, not barking and not there. One second. So at this stage, um, we probably, we can continue getting the flow of all this stuff in. I probably should get some key features going at this point, like his ears, really sort these out in terms of positioning and scale. Like they look a little, they look a little big. It, his nose feels kind of short still, so I'm going to, um, uh, sort that out. So let's see here. I don't mind kind of a shorter nose, but it feels kind of really short right now. So we need to start sorting this out. So we got the lips here. We'll find the lower lip here where it meets the jaw. Start to kind of refine this. So you can kind of see now some of these forms are going to start breaking down as we start to go further in the secondary forms. Let's get this chin out a little. This is probably altogether too far forward. I tend to make my stuff for some reason at first too far forward. I don't know why. I feel like I do it every time. So what we can do. Yeah, here I am, Kurt, still doing some ZBrushing. I actually haven't done teaching in a long time though. Unfortunately, I really, I really enjoyed teaching there for a while. I figured this actually would be a nice middle ground to just get on and talk to people about ZBrush and have fun. It's kind of how I saw it, so here I am. I really enjoyed actually teaching classes because people generally who were involved at least were really into it. And I don't mind sharing knowledge that I know because people did the same for me, so I like it. All right, so I'm just trying to sort out some of his features here real quick. He kind of has a flat face in the old design. Kind of go with that. Um, Ryu is asking, do you have people that use laptops at work? I'm looking for one, but there's so many of them to choose from. Um. Some people do, um, most artists don't. I've seen concept artists do it. Most 3D artists typically have desktops at work. Now saying that, if you are personally looking for something, then laptop makes sense if, you, if you're on the go a lot. Like I use primarily a laptop. I don't have a good desktop setup. Some people have space for desktops. I don't have a lot of space for one. Um, I kind of like couch sculpting too, a bit, personally. Like I'm actually straight up sitting on my dining room table. I know it looks fancy there. I'm kidding. Right behind me is like a little room area. Um, but I sit on my couch a lot. Oh my goodness, this profile. Um, and the one I have, I have a Dell, a Dell Precision. It, it actually handles it really nice. Um, I was fortunate though, the work Work helps me with getting one of these. So I can say though, the Dell Precision I do have, I really enjoyed. There's a few other ones out there. I've seen like the, um, I was looking at the razors. Those seem like some of their new ones are really nice. They're just really pricey. Um, I feel like Nightcrawler would have like really good features. Like when I look at them here, initial, my initial thing is like, dude's chiseled. Dude has some chiseled features, Superman-like almost. And kind of long, big old, big old cheekbones. My proportions are getting a little funky here though. I think it's just too far forward, like I was saying. Um, 
What's up, Bad Shank? I'm not using Pure Ref. I'm using ZBrush. ZBrush has, I know what you're talking about. Um, and I actually should probably consider Pure Ref to see, how, see if the, it'll pick up on the stream. Um, ZBrush just has in the texture palette, you can add textures like this and move them around. Um, but Pure Ref is really cool. If you guys don't know what that is, it's a, a reference program where you can basically load it up and have floating little pictures um, all around. And you can house your images that way. I used, believe it or not, I've used Picasa for years. Kind of funny. They don't support it anymore. I probably should switch. I was actually talking to a buddy at work today about Pure Ref. I think I might switch over to it. So yeah, I'm gonna play up the cheekbones. I think I need to get this eye shape in. It's like really aggressive triangle shape um, on him seems to be a thing. I mean, he has glowy eyes basically. Let's just make him glowy yellow real quick. We concentrate on a shape. Put the skin shader on or something. So if I wasn't streaming, I'd probably go a little bit quicker, maybe a little looser about this, but honestly, I just, I take my time with this stuff. I'm not crazy fast. I'd rather be like, um, A little more deliberate. I uh, know I want to have forms here, right? So this is where hairline starts to come in. I know my cranium, you have your brow. I need to start sorting. I'm using damn standard here to kind of push back a large planes. I love it for that. I'm going to probably try and keep this guy a little bit more stylized once I start to refine this and its structure. Um, in this case, I'm not going for close likeness on this. Honestly, I, I'm using it mainly as, hey, I want to make Nightcrawler. Um, but to your point, I probably, will, we, I probably should match some aspects of this. But no, I'm not going for cast shadow likeness. Um, also, I guarantee these don't match up in all angles, like side and front. They're probably drawn, I don't know what this was, probably for just like a comic model sheet or something. I'm, I'm not sure the history behind this specific image. I think the main thing I typically try to go for is the essence of the character, try to just capture the feel, what makes it them. And, uh, especially on a personal project, trying to have fun. So I, I don't beat myself up too much. If my goal is I'm doing a likeness, then sure, yeah, maybe that's a good way to do it. But in this case, my goal is have a good time, try and make something I like. And when people see it, they should go, oh, Nightcrawler. And hopefully like it. The main thing is they know it's him. So start to sort out these. I don't want them to look like old man now that I'm starting to add some of this stuff. Oh my goodness. He's totally looking like old man. He needs stronger. Basically the problem what's happening here, um, even on the image, he doesn't have super strong lines by default. So I'm probably getting a little heavy handed on those, but also um, my upper muzzle is not, does not have good plane structure right now, like for the bone structure underneath there, which is causing problems. So one of the things I try to do a lot, especially once I start to lock down structure, you can even see the nostrils. Like, look at, look, there's like kind of not great structure here. I, I definitely look up underneath this stuff a lot and try to sort out. So I probably have a 
couple of problem issues with the muzzle here. One, it might not be wide enough in some of these spots, and two, um, going back in sp space, I probably need to have this slightly more forward, I think, just a little bit. And then this upper lip feels, or lower lip, sorry, feels, um, feels off. Let's see here. I like it as like this really, not pouty lip, but really strong planes. Right there. Oh, and also I have this like mega wide fold here. Should just hit like his lip. Let's see, I guess sorted. So the problem is if you start getting detailed too quick, it, he's looking like an old man because um, it's getting lumpy on some of these forms. In this case, I need really nice, strong, clean forms for this guy. And also this is really soft right now too. As I start to iron out different aspects, he's gonna get um, clearly gonna fall apart in different areas. All right, let's try. I might have to mask. Sometimes I'll mask out um, note the upper lip has three forms. You got this middle one. Wait, am I saying that right? Yeah, uh, the lower lip's like two forms. Like you have one on each side, these like ball kind of forms. The upper lip consists of three. The middle one, two side ones to make your little lips. See if we can get some structure here. Yeah. This is a good reason to have a base mesh. <laughs> we have some structure. This looks so funny. Okay, so this is all lumpy right here. Let's um let's try and sort this. And sometimes at this stage, if I'm struggling for a bit, I might actually remesh it. Because these like certain forms can be easier to move around at a low mesh than at a higher mesh. All right, so I'm trying to get that plane right there. So I use the damn standard. You'll notice like how it's round. I use damn standard to kind of pull out this specific plane that I know kind of wraps up here. And then I know the upper lip is going to wrap over this thing. Thanks, Kurt. Dude, I'd love to teach again. It's a time thing for me at this point. Since those classes, I've had multiple kids. I have three kids right now. Of a, and so I try to spend most of my time with them and family, you know, or I'm just tired. I want to hang out with my wife. So I'm hoping again like this, just join on the streams and we can go over certain things. I, I'm generally probably going to try and sculpt for fun. And hopefully with that, I can teach some stuff as we go. So tune in. I'm thinking I was gonna see how this stream went in a couple. I'm thinking every other Tuesday, if, if it goes well, maybe I can just do Tuesday nights in general. I just don't wanna over schedule right now. So that's why I was thinking every other Tuesday I could swing. People join. It's all about the planes though, as Kurt is saying. So go get some good faceplate reference. Um, you can see this is, okay, this is a good plain one. Like your, your nostril, this does not go up in like that. This this form goes back. Like you have, um, you know, your bone structure under here, your teeth going up that this goes around, but this this is causing problems for us. This right here, get, get out of here. And again, a nice low res mesh can be simpler to deal with this 
then I recommend keeping that, doing low res meshes for that reason. So, and then we can start to try and find these planes here. Um, there's some really good reference out there on face planes and things. Philippe Ferro has some really nice stuff. Um, plates he can buy or books he has on just planes of the face that I'd recommend. I think Nightcrawler should have a pointy like nose. Just seems nightcrawler -y to me. <clears throat> I'm pretty much my plan is to I think my plan, at least currently as of today, is to take it to something like this image where um let's see if I can see the full oh, it's not showing the full thing. But something where he's posed up. Is it going? Where is it? Here we go. Something like this, I'm thinking. So I'll probably start with him like just neutral. See, I like this hairdo actually better. I need to make it like this where it has kind of a swoop to the side and back and up and around, kind of flows. Kind of the opposite of what I'm doing here, starting to do here. Um, maybe I'll work out, actually I could probably leave the hair for uh, later, but um, that's kind of my goal, I think. I'm gonna have, I wanna have him posed, and just kind of make a cool uh, maquette-like thing, maybe get, see if I can get it printed by someone or send it to one of those printing things. That'd be fun. Unless the um, unless we just find on stream or stream goes somewhere else with it, then that's probably okay too. Honestly, it's just good times. So I can get, let's see if we can get some more of that hair vibe going. The ears are really off right now. It's because they're too high. I think this is still too um, short of a nose. This is also where a low res mesh is better when you start moving stuff like this. Yeah, this is better. Probably a little. He almost looks like he's his, his face is back. I need to fix his jawline, I think, for that. Something about it feels back. Make sure we have this nice little pouch there. Gotta make sure this all comes together nicely. Oh no, it is breaking down. can define this right here. A lot of people have like a pretty clear, I don't forget what that's called right there, but kind of like form bump. And these lips, so I have a problem right now, these lips. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna mask them to help myself real quick. So I'm gonna use this inflate brush for the lower lip to try and get some form going here. And then I'm gonna invert. So I, I kind of have a problem right now on my lips. I don't have a clear, clear planes like There we go. I need like this V right here, you know? And so forth. Then we should feel this nasal fold going up in here. That's what it's called. And now I'm gonna kind of reinforce this at a larger size, this kind of form there and try and draw a bit of this, so this kind of 
rhythm flows down into here. Still those lip, the lip, the lip forms are off right now. They just aren't strong enough. I'm gonna keep moving though, come back. Let's get the eyes here real quick. Well, not real quick, but get them. Um, let's do this real fast. Let's look at, I'm gonna pull in some reference real quick. Or what was I going to look at? Um, reference, reference. Shoot, what was I just going to pull up? Oh, the skull structure. I wanted to look at real fast. Uh, anatomy. That's not what I wanted. Trying to give myself a quick reminder of some basics on the skull. Oh yeah, okay. One thing that everyone does have is this, this kind of plane right here. It's important to have this, and it's basically so you just fill it in just to get this stronger plane right there. I kind of have it, I mean, naturally in my sculpt already, but since I want to keep this a little more st stylized, I'm going to make sure it's strong. It's not saving, that's good. Good morning, Dan. Where are you coming from for the morning? Let me say, must be in Europe or UK or something. Glad his yellow eyes are creepy because they should be. Netherlands, nice. I'd love to visit there. I just, uh, I've been following Liverpool all season, so I know about Virgil van Dijk, Dutch player, the man, assuming you watch soccer. Hello, welcome, Anant. All right, I was getting distracted there. All right, let's get something on the eyes here. Sort this out a little bit. Um, I prefer stylized stuff, like stylized realism, if anything. Um, it depends. It's funny who you talk to, and if you mean stylized by like more like Disney style, I like that kind of stuff as well. And and people who do Disney kind of style are like, oh, your stuff's realistic. And then you talk to someone who does realistic stuff, and it's like, you know. Some of this is more stylized. Oh man, I watch a lot of, of soccer or football, a lot. I'm the American who has it on all the time and people look at me funny. I, uh, yeah, all the time, love it. I will say I want Liverpool to win a Champions League that would be my vote. I'll give my, um, I, grew up, I grew up playing soccer here in the States. So I, I started playing baseball and stuff. I, I grew up in Texas and Colorado primarily here. And um, in Texas, we all played baseball or football or something. But in elementary school, I really gravitated to soccer. I had some buddies I think that played and um, 
I started playing, I just always played. And so over here, the teams I knew about were like Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, I guess, Real Madrid, Barcelona. Um, the major world teams at the time. So like I just liked United because that's pretty much all I knew about. So Man United followed them. And then the last, I'd say, 10 years, it's been a while now, when really we started getting um, Fox picked up soccer here. They, they brought the light, rights to the Premier League, like, that was like 10 years ago or something. They don't have it anymore. And you could watch a ton of games. Before that, it was very hard to get games. And so I've had the ability now to watch, like, everything. And so now there's other channels, like, we have the, the, the La Liga on BN, on ESPN, and um, NBC Sports shows all the Premier League now. You know, you have the, the Bundesliga, I think, on Fox. And so we're kind of lucky in that sense over here that's just like everything. <laughs> because I don't think it, because it's not as popular yet, they just want to suck up, suck up as much of the market as they can. You know? So I have a lot of channels. Um, yeah, I don't understand the whole football is not my, my type of thing either. Um, I'm going to do, um, I'll end up doing the whole body. I just started on the head tonight. We started from the old sphere and just started going. Let me save this, see if I can do the old undo. My goal tonight was just to see how far this went. Let's see if we can do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Oh, I moved it down here. There it goes. Oh, moved up here. I love that. That's fun. So, yeah, the goal will be um, body. I'll probably take this to an okay spot tonight. And then um, maybe next stream. I'll, I'll try not to. If this is of interest to you guys, or if you, it depends what you guys think, I can do this whole thing on stream and just use this for stream. We build this whole thing, pose it, and the like. And then maybe the boring stuff I do off stream, whatever that might be. Maybe just refining some of this. I'm, I'm not sure. Sometimes it can take some time. But... Um, what is of interest to you guys we can do? What would you guys like to see? I mean, I'm primarily into, for the stream at least personally, um, sculpting focused stuff where it's like making a project. Um, I don't mind doing demos. We had a request earlier to show some topology stuff. Um, but I'd prefer to just sculpt, answer questions, unless you guys have specifics. You'd like to see. I'm thinking of just sculpting this thing until it gets really boring. Unless you guys are like this is boring. But sculpting just takes time. But we could mix in maybe um, next time like a, a mix of some things or some demos and sculpting time. Or like next stream, we could even try and pose out, take the body and pose it and get that all set up to be sculpted, you know, that could be interesting. Oh, there's focal shift. Yeah, it could be a creature too. The problem with sitting at this uh, table is I feel like I'm hunched over. All right, these ears, I keep saying I'm going to fix them and I, I keep not doing it. Let's do this. How do I keep getting distracted? I think you got me talking about soccer there for a second, or football, as some say.
Yeah, we could try to do creature. I'm trying to think. I could also show you guys sculpts from past projects, you know, like and kind of go over them. You know, I've all my for the most part of all my God of War stuff from the back in the day. I can show production kind of sculpts, what they look like. Might surprise you maybe. I don't know. Um, go over any specific maybe techniques, like little tricks. Because the reality is most sculpting just takes time, you know. At least I'm not like a super wizard. I'm not like crazy fast. Yeah, this is problematic here. This needs to come way down. These ears feel so thick. Hmm. Yeah, it could go on anatomy on the body too, in pose. And honestly, it what I'll need to do for the pose, I'll probably collect reference, you know, and um, that's really key. And then understanding the structure, what's going on down there. This is why I love sculptures though, like how I just move that down real quick and just fix sculpt some of this stuff. Move on. I don't have to worry about my mesh. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, I say like on this guy specifically because he has a lot of anatomy. We could pose it up and start breaking down aspects. Like when I was looking at him like hunched over and his knee anatomy, I feel like that'd be quite complicated to deal with um, in a bent knee and to look at it and how to handle it, I think would be fun. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, this is what's bothering me about these is I have this ear and it lacks some of the structural stuff here in the back. Uh, I mean, it's causing for this gigantic form, which honestly, I don't mind so much, but it's just too thick. I need more of this to be lean. Ears are complicated. And the new God of War looks amazing. They did such a good job. Some of the games now, it's just getting crazy. The lighting in these engines are is so good. I mean, really incredible. this body out of here. Yes, I do mean Dad of War. He's not quite as vicious as he used to used to be. But it's still cool. I'm excited for whatever they do next because building that first one is really hard. Um, and now they'll take all the learnings and work on the next one, which will be cool. I need to probably look at some hairline reference here. You know, it's funny, I, I always forget, like, on hairlines, it's like, I don't know why, I'm always like, wait, where does the um, point come out? You know, like this, go back. I don't know why. I always forget, and I always have to look at hairlines, images, without fail, I feel like. It's 
something like this. I'm not sure why you think I would know this. And I need to probably get some images next time to sort out the flow of this hair. But if it all goes this way, I can assume some stuff. I don't think you guys have used Keyshot ZBrush link up. It's nice. I love it. I got Keyshot a while back. And um, man, it's so easy. Looks so good. Give him a nice part here. Hello, hello. Thanks for coming. It's really, oh, you know what I just realized? Oh no, you guys can see the chat from everyone. Okay. Because yeah, this chat comes from YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. It's very cool that the, they have these programs that can sort all the locations. It's pretty awesome. So many um, cool tools now. All right, let's see here. What about his face do I want to? All right, I feel like I can define some of these planes better. So you guys kind of can see like um, it's kind of just flat through here, right? And especially eyelids should have distinct planes. Um, it can be tough in these modes to get good planes. I actually find that if I re-topo them, it's actually easier. So like, it's not uncommon if I want something really clean to block all this in either, and maybe the new Z remesh will be even better for me in this case, um, and then re-topo it so that I can then literally go in these different views and help pull them around because this could be quite tricky to get it really clean without that. So if you ever find yourself struggling, consider getting a cleaner mesh. I remember watching some old Z Jones videos and she would have like really high poly clean meshes. And um, she would just pull the pixels around, or the verts, sorry. And she'd get really clean shapes. And um, I think there's some value to that, actually, even in old ZBrush. Oh, I like that, actually. That's cool. That um, overhang right there. How sharp it is. Because what I kind of want to create is like a triangle-ish thing going. So kind of the illusion of a kind of flat. Um, I still want to follow the form of the eye. I don't think we should lose that. Otherwise, it won't be very believable. But you can have almost the... need to, again, find some rough for this, too. Yeah, the eyelids for game characters, anything that's, like, cinematic, um, like a game like Uncharted, they'll have very, they'll have very specific meshes for one they use, and two, they'll model some of that stuff at a pretty high poly level for just consistency and, and keeping it clean. So they'll have, like, a mesh that has all the loops and I'll have specific loops for like the edges of the um, eyelid. You know, like, so like, 
if it was um, like right here, they'd have a loop they'd always make sure is like right here, right? Um, one, then they could skin it all, but two, it, it just helped them make stuff quicker. And then they just designed the um, eye shapes. What's Z-Wrap? Is that a new feature in 2019? I'm not aware. We were talking about 2019 earlier and how I can't wait to actually get it. I don't have it on my machine right now. And people were talking about the Retopo tools. But not Retopo tools, just the Z-Remesh stuff. Good night. Thanks for coming. See you later, Admiral. Till next time. Hopefully I'll be back here in like a week or two. Otherwise, you can catch other, other streamers sculpting. All right, let's give this little form here. Start to make him. Let me think. I know I have this. Gonna hit this plane. I have some funky plane right here though. Yeah, Z Jones, are you asking? What's up, so much monsters? Um, if you're asking me who is Z Jones or if I meant if I said Z Jones. It's Z as in um S E Z like this. I think. Like that. I think that's how you spell her name. She, I don't know how much she posts anymore though. She did some, she used to be pretty well known for some cinematic stuff. There's newer people now maybe doing stuff. Um, even if you look at the Uncharted guys um, with Frank Sang, they might have more current things, but I always liked, I was always impressed with Z, like she'd do these girls really clean, and um, she, yeah, just had really clean high-res, clean meshes for the eyes, like, and she would get really specific reference for the eyes, I remember, I was watching one of her older tutorials, and, um, and yeah, she didn't sculpt it like this, she would model the eyes. And also, I mean, a lot, she was more old school at the time, too, in terms of ZBrush or Maya modeling. So she had some old school techniques that are really useful, that are probably still very useful. So as you can see, I try to work out um, this plane. Let's use our H polish to kind of reinforce it real quick. And then we can So is Z wrap a new feature? That's what I was asking. Like is it something that's in it right now, or is it something that they added to 2019? The next thing is this cheekbone right here. I need it to come forward just a little bit now to make the skull, like so it has the spot where the eye sits. And the skin can fall off that. We can pull this up into it make him like super cheek bony. Want to keep this clean though as I can. Oh, man, she might have been at the Z Summit. She's really talented. Really good. I was a little bit out of the loop last year on art scene I was so engrossed in the project I was on that I missed out on some stuff last year. 
And so she probably was there. I did not realize it. But she's really good. So the, a lot of these, uh, the stuff I, most of the people I like, like Jordan Shell and some of these, like Eris, uh, I don't know how to say his last name, this Greek dude, they have really good bone structure on um, their creatures and monsters. And I think it's really important, this stuff. So you can feel the weight of where skin is pulling from is really important to know. Um, just like hitting these planes and knowing like where stuff is solid and where things are pulling makes things for very believable, even if they're stylized realism or whatever you want to call it. Knowing your structure is huge. So really know your bone structure and your planes. I say it all the time. So I'm basically just trying to re reinforce this whole section right here, this eye cavity, is what I'm working on. And this still is kind of flat. Like This needs to um, come back. I need to feel, um, I'm probably going to have to, let's see here. So I could Z-remesh this. Oh, it's an application. Oh, I see. I see. And they just added it as a plugin. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Yep, Nightcrawler. You came on to the Nightcrawler scene. I want to make some Nightcrawler for a while. I'm, I'm using it as inspiration more than anything. Old, some old school Nightcrawler. Probably going to have a mix of a blend of a few of them. Um, I just thought he's fun. Always liked Nightcrawler. Visually, his aesthetics I always thought were fun. All right, I'm going to try and use my clay brush instead to get this volume here. Hello to you too, sir. Um, so topo, is it better to manually do it on here? So this really depends your goals. Um, I'd say though, if you're talking games, um, I always think it's better to, if you're talking about a game asset, um, it's better to manually do it almost always. Rarely. There's no auto topo feature that I know that's going to make one that great for you. I mean, they're getting better for sure. Um, even the new ones have really clean topology that are really impressive. But typically, if you just spend the time doing it, you're going to make better topology yourself. Um, now, if you're if you can have really high res meshes on your project and say it doesn't matter that much, and you value time and speed more than the topology at the time, then the topo tools could be great, and maybe they actually suffice for your needs depending on the project. But I have found that nothing really replaces um, manually just doing it. It's almost, especially for games, because you got to be optimal. And it's almost impossible for some of these tools to be really, to know what optimal is. Um, yeah, I've yet to see a tool do it as well as someone can. Because so much about games is where you put triangles or don't put triangles. Where you end loops and start loops. Where you actually need stuff for deformation. Um, in my opinion, that separates people that are really good at it or aren't as good at it. It's people who understand those things. And um, basically, you, 
use all your edges for something. It should make sense. Um, and not just be there for the sake of geometry. That's a cool thing I like about games actually a lot is that um, they are um, technically really um, cool in the sense that you're trying to make this thing look awesome with limited hardware and real-time specs. And the best games and groups of people all take that into consideration all the time. You know, like the God of War series when I was on that, for us to get everything to run really well and, and get the most out of it, we all had to be very optimal about how we built stuff. And I, I really like that actually a lot. I think it's really cool. I think it's really interesting. Looks funny here. It's almost like he has, honestly, I probably should just get his neck all merged together and then just get his suit on like he has his and just sort that out. I should probably do that soon. Oh yeah, you, you use triangles a lot in topology. Like I could show you a lot of meshes where triangles are the thing. I use a lot of triangles. Triangles aren't bad at all if you know um, how to use them right. Here, let's subdivide this body some real quick. Let's put in some key features. What I need really right here is his neck muscles to kind of kind of feel these out real quick. And his jawline. You know, it's funny, at very early on, I remember early sculpts, I'd put the jawline behind the ear sometimes. But the jaw always is in front of your ear. Always. Well, should be. And I don't know why it took me a while. Remember where the jaw turns? It's typically around where your mouth opens, like right there. Typically your wider portion as well of the jaw. Um, so if you're doing Topo and Maya, I actually you like Maya a lot now. There's a few tips you can do. Um, one is if you're only doing half the body at a time, like say like you're mirroring your mesh, only export half of the high poly. Also, you don't have to have the highest res for topology. I mean, you're baking down normal maps. So the idea is, you know, you might be able to go down a level or two in ZBrush and then export it into, um, to Maya. If you really must, um, you can decimate. Maya handles, it's quad draw stuff handles uh, decimation master pretty well. Decimated stuff pretty well, I mean. So I use decimation master a lot. I know a lot of my artists at work, they, they like decimation master when they topo. But the Maya um, topo tools are pretty solid now. Top topology tools have really advanced. Really good. What time is it? 12.30. Uh, I can go a little longer. Yeah, I feel like there was like... Um, there's like this topology race there for a bit, you know? It's settled down now some, but like Topo Gun really pushed a lot of stuff forward. A couple programs did. And now it's um, even ZBrush for a while. Honestly, I used ZBrush topology for a while where you manually draw all the geometry. I don't know if you guys remember that, but and it just disappeared one day. It was weird. It used to be a topology feature in here. And I used it because I just, I liked being in it, it. Something about it actually felt really nice compared to at the time what existed. And um, 
I used it. It was kind of awesome. But she avoids me need to ask them what, what happened to that, you know? Let me think here. What am I doing wrong here on this ear? We got... I think I just need to have that come here. This comes out in some sense like that. This is where reference is good to look at. It is crazy how so much this has topo tools. I actually use primarily all quad draw now though, Maya. I don't use much else for topology. I use the, I mean, obviously I use ZBrush features a lot for, you know, when building stuff for ZBrush, but for game assets, um, I use Maya for final. Let's get this ear to a good place. Let's try and get this face to a decent place tonight, and then I'll probably stop. Push through here. Yeah, I'm really excited to try um, Z Remesher in the next one. People have been saying good things. And honestly, it's probably amazing for, yeah, nice high-res stuff. Um, where you're not concerned. I mean, like if you don't have concerns about geometry counts and things, or like you're in a prototype type phase, like that stuff's great. Do stuff really fast. And I might eat my words one day when even triangles are handled well. Like, all right, well, there you go. You know what would be cool is if I could like put in like a certain amount of geometry and it somehow auto populates the rest. Like if I just picked some hard spots and then it like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that tool would look, I'm just thinking. Just thinking. Yeah, actually that's true, the hard surface stuff on it, those, some of those demos were pretty amazing. I love that the tools just keep getting better. I mean, especially ZBrush always surprises me. So this ear, Really not interesting right here. Let's add some. You gotta really commit to your forms everywhere. If you don't, then they will stand out like a sore thumb when other parts are, you know, cleaned up. And I and like I was saying this earlier, I really feel like ears the ear are one ears are one of those that like People don't give the love it needs, and, it, and it'll stand out. H polish is one of those brushes that definitely benefits from clean topology. Man, it's just not as good at this phase of sculpting how I do this. All of, some of these really struggle. Man, my ears just look funny. It's too thick right here. I miss my hairline. I just need to come out more. No. So when did you all start using ZBrush? Who's the newest in here and who's the oldest user? I'd be curious. I 
I'll have to check that out. Robots. Yeah, I'm telling you, Nightcrawler's the man. He's so cool. I think my ears. I think I just have two. You know what it is? I think this shape is just too thick. I have. What's going on here? Focal shift. I need more shape there. Less shape. Less volume in here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to look at fresh eyes like tomorrow or something on those ears. They they're just too thick. I think. Um, something's just they're just funky right now. Like all around, just too thick. I think. Top of the ears go more into inside the head, not not so much going in opposite directions. They're also a bit more pointy. Yeah, definitely the concept ones are way pointier than what I have. There's a bit of this that's lacking. I need to style these ears too. I think I'm getting tired. I think it's my problem. What time is it for everyone? Yeah, I'm not following concept hardcore. But honestly, Nightcrawler should have pointy ears, so. To my point before, if someone sees this and doesn't go, oh, that's Nightcrawler, then I don't feel I have done my job. So I do want him to have pointy ears. The concept, they are really tight to his head, now that you mentioned that, the how they handled the... Um, let me see here. Oh, nice, Manchester. Oh. So are you a City fan or United fan or neither? Because with... Um, I always like to ask my English friends that. And they're usually like, I don't watch soccer. Whoa, someone who likes them both in Manchester. I didn't know that it was okay. I thought that'd be like getting here and you're like a Yankees or a Red Sox fan. You can't be both. But it does exist. Okay, I'm going to stop looking at these ears. They're driving me nuts right now. Yeah, Man United. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I wish I could talk Game of Thrones with everyone. I, I did not not watch any Game of Thrones. Yeah, I, I've always heard Man United is the team in Manchester. I grew up watching them. Well, not watching them, following them here in the States at least. Actually, I have a United banner out in my garage. It's one of the only teams I knew about here. So every now and then, it's good to go back and look at your skull structure. Oh, no. I like how the internet's up in arms over Game of Thrones. I personally did not watch it, believe it or not. 
I somehow missed out on that train. Maybe I can go back and watch it now. And everyone will be jealous that I'm having a first time experience. Yeah, I heard a lot of people are saying it just felt like it ended quick, but honestly, that show is so long. I wonder like what they could have done really. My wife and I just watched this show the um, over the weekend called Dead to Me on Netflix. That was pretty interesting, actually. It's like a drama kind of like suspense thing. It was pretty good. And then I got to see, it's sometimes hard to get out and see movies with the kids since I have a couple kids. And we got to go see um, Endgame. So that was nice. Got to actually see that during all the hype. Really liked Infinity War. Endgame was pretty good, but um, really liked Infinity War. I thought that was great. Nope. I'm part of that didn't watch it crew. I, there aren't a ton of us, or people don't like to admit it. I do think there's an aspect of that where people feel like, they're like, oh, I can't admit that I haven't watched Game of Thrones for some reason. I, just people are funny like that. Um, so this is another spot we can really emphasize, especially since he is pretty... Um, We need to make sure the lips feel like they are getting the proper overlaps. So what I'm going to do is actually mask this off. Go to the side and kind of nudge this forward for overlap here. Just a little bit. I'm using the this move or the snake hook brush here, just to help because you really want overlap on forms, on muscles, especially here. The lips are going in, and this form kind of wraps around it. Let me smooth that out. I heard they're making spinoffs, though, for Game of Thrones. I'm curious if, I'm, I'm curious if people are going to like them. Just because he's so invested into the originals, original, it's hard sometimes, I think, you know, it's shown pretty much, like, it's pretty difficult to do these spinoffs and people still enjoy them. You know what I actually read? My friend sent me an article today um, for you, the, you guys that might be from software um, fans that make the Souls series, Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Supposedly at E3, they're going to announce, at least the rumor mill is, they're making a, a Norse fantasy game with the, the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. You guys would know his name. But um, supposedly they're working with him on, on something. And I can totally get behind from software making a Norse game. I hope it is true. That would be amazing. Would be so awesome.
sort out some of these forms here. You can see, like, I only got so clean on this eye shape. I, I probably will have to um, get clean topology. So I need those new Zillion Mesher tools. I wonder if most people are this way. At least that's how it is for me, I find. Kind of tough to do eyes super clean, just sculpting purely. What is, what are you guys talking about, Glenn? Oh, Walking Dead, I assume. Another one I didn't watch. I, again, my, I don't know if you guys, how many of you were here earlier I was talking about this. I grew up primarily playing video games as my culture. Um, didn't watch a lot of TV or movies, to be quite honest. And so, to this day, when I think of relaxing, a lot of people go to TV as their thing, or movies, I think video games. So maybe what I need to do is play the Walking Dead video games. Huh. I was wondering if you're actually joking. Other than these ears, I'm feeling pretty good about this thing, where it's at at least tonight. Let's see if I can. It helps a little bit. Do you guys have any other questions I could help with before I head out for the night? Otherwise, I appreciate everyone coming. I'm going to wrap up here, I think. I'm getting tired. It's almost 1 a.m. for me, which I actually don't normally stay up this late anymore. But I'm having fun. I actually enjoyed this. It's been nice. I'm definitely going to try and plan other streams. Oh, am I going for the body today? I'm going to work on that today? No. That'll be next time. I could probably focus on... Next stream I do, I could probably focus on... Um, what we could do is... Um, probably pose this up, go over posing. Like I could fix the proportions and stuff and maybe fix the hands and feet so they're night crawler hands and feet. Um, these are just fists right now here too, so they aren't really what we need. And we could pose it, go over posing and then start sculpting and pose. I think would be good. Yeah, thanks, guys. Glad you enjoyed it. I know it's kind of a slow process to watch someone just sculpt a thing. But um, I enjoy it. I enjoy doing that. I think it's fun. I'm going to gather better reference. I, I think I can sort this hair out. I, I can wait for the stream also to do any of these aspects. I, 
I'd be curious, like, would you guys prefer me to wait and, and say, for example, go over sculpting this hair on stream and then like maybe do one where we do the body and so on versus me doing it off stream? I don't have to use a pre-working mesh. We can go from scratch. I really have no preference. We could rebuild it. I could actually go over like um, doing it out of um, um, like primitives. We could like block in the whole thing, pose it up, sculpt it. This has been helpful for me at least in just terms of uh, having this neck here, which is nice. Yeah, we could do that. I could go over blocking out like how you can approach doing something like that. I think that would be pretty good. Where we take the body and I, I block it all out, primitives, see how that goes, and then we merge it together, pose it. I actually will probably pose it with primitives also. It actually makes posing a lot easier. Um, I don't do anything fancy for posing. I just use Transpose Master. Mm. Yeah, we could go over hair. I could just sculpt, at least for this. I could think about some do's and don'ts. And I could gather some, I need to gather some better reference too for this hair. Because I kind of like gathered um, these initial shots to get me going. And now I'm seeing there's a few things I need reference for. But the main thing with hair is just to get the flow going. So like, I can talk about this probably more on one of the next streams is you don't want to get too detailed. You, you want to just plot out um, your basic construction in terms of like where the hair is coming from, like it's part, that kind of thing. And um, before getting too far, does he have, does Nightcrawler have a Long sideburns? I can't even tell. And I might need to add some more character to his face, specifically on the profile. The drawing of this guy here, I'm not as keen on. I like some aspects of this one. Hmm. We'll figure it out. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll just sculpt the whole thing. Um, primarily, I, I'll probably just do a sculpt. Um, I can, let's just start there. And we can also probably talk about rendering. I think uh, Pixelogic doesn't mind since Keyshot kind of partners with them. I think I can do Keyshot and um, ZBrush stuff together. And that's pretty much my workflow anyways. Like I, I recently did, um, uh, that Akuma I was showing earlier and rendered it all in key shot. Um, like this guy, where is he? So like I could even go over that process once we get once we get to it, you know, if you guys wanted. I'm opening it in ZBrush because it's easier to show in here. Let's see. Like this kind of stuff. Um, like how I just handle rendering it. Yeah, my streams are on, uh, well, I, from what I understand how the stream works is they'll take it and then they upload it to YouTube. So they'll all be there. Um, so you should be able to rewatch it. And here's the Akuma. And so basically what we can do is go over, I'll just, I'll just try to stick to the whole thing on the stream. And then if people get bored um, on a particular part, I can work on it off stream. And so I'll find out, keep, if you guys keep looking, Pixelogic poster schedules, I'll probably always be doing Tuesday nights. Um, every other Tuesday night, I'm kind of thinking, I got to sync up with Kyle on it and, um, and go from there. Yeah, this Akuma, he was started pretty much the same way as this Nightcrawler that we're doing. I, I started just kind of with his head. I initially was just going to do the bust of his head. And then I um, just kind of kept going. 
This hair was actually the pain. I, and I'm not even still that happy with it, to be quite honest. But I had to move on. But I started the same thing. His body, I just, I think I sculpted just from nothing. I, I, I started with posing it, like simple pose, like just standing. This is pretty symmetrical pose. Um, uh, you know, and just sculpt. And then I, I break the symmetry. Nightcrawler, we can be a little more asymmetrical, I think. Um, the hair is all sculpted, yes, by hand, meaning just brushes. I use a lot of clay, yeah, damn standard clay, H polish type stuff. Um, some of these I might have made chunks and like duplicated them at first. I tried a few ways, and honestly, in the end, just sculpting it was the fastest. I should have just done that. I should just, that's what I'm going to do on this guy. So like, this guy, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to sculpt, I'm just going to sculpt the hair. And the best thing we could do is just lay it out, take our time, make sure we like the construction, the general forms, make sure we like where everything's coming from. And then you just slowly build it up and you just detail it. That is really the best thing we could do for this. Make sure his hairline's correct. Hairline's a little funky right now. So yeah. You know, he does need some wooden clogs. I was doing the Street Fighter V um, version and he's just barefoot. He does have skins, I think, where he has the, the clogs. And I could have done, that would have been cool. But yeah, he just has the old, the old feet. So, guys, I, I actually am enjoying hanging out. I want to keep going, but I'm actually getting pretty tired. I got to get up still in the morning, go to work. For all of y'all that are st stayed up with me, thank you. It was fun. Um, any of you in the morning or whatever, good morning. Enjoy your day. I think I'm going to call it a night, though. I wish I had key shot here. I would render an image of this real quick. Um, but tonight, I'll probably just keep it in ZBrush. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Um, for sure, just keep checking on the schedule. And I'm trying to think. I'm on Instagram if you guys ever have questions about scheduling or just any questions. You hit me up, Art of Caton, just like this on Instagram. I'm not really on Facebook. You'll find me on there, but I don't really... Um, on there much it's like if you message me on instagram or something i'll be on there and i post some stuff on there and stuff so anyways good night everybody i'll see you all tomorrow not tomorrow sorry look at me i'm already getting loopy let's do this let's light this guy real fast let's try and render it but i'll see you all next time i appreciate you hanging out and everybody have a good night i'll see you later all right Bye. I'm gonna stop this stream. Look at me. I my my exit even is uh, a little rough. I gotta work on my my exit when you know when you have the transition and all that. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Good night, everybody. Later.